every now and again, the Chinese market surprises us with something innovative and uh, fairly well built. And it demonstrates that it is fully capable of doing more than just imitating Western designs. This is a really bad example. This is the Chinese Modulus, which is a pretty blatant ripoff of the Modulus ECS-10 from Nerf. However, uh, in spite of having some uh, tolerance issues and performance issues and so on, I think that it has enough merits that it kind of stands on its own legs. Uh, there are good reasons to look at this. This is a $75 set that comes with the blaster itself, as well as pretty much every modulus accessory, and it kind of has its own unique twist on some of these. So let's take a look at what this does. Now keep in mind, I'm looking at this from a perspective of what makes the modulus line the modulus line, which is the actual modularity and uh, I suppose the intangible cool factor, because if you're collecting modulus, um, you clearly want it for something other than just pure performance. Not that they can't perform, but so can other nerf blasters. But the whole point of Modulus is you want something that is fun, is cool, is uh, you know aesthetically pleasing in some sense. So let's look at what this does that in some ways actually overshadows the nerf version. First of all, this is nice. It's actually got a connector for a battery pack, and it comes with its own battery pack. Now, I don't know much of anything about electronic blasters, but I would imagine 4.8 volts is, uh, is not terribly impressive. It didn't sound terribly impressive when I revved it and fired it. I was getting velocities in the 50s with the darts that it came with, which were uh, a generous helping of uh, something that looked like solid-tipped domes. But... That's okay, because I imagine if you're the type to spend 75 bucks on a blaster, you're probably going to be modding anyway. This is a USB charger that comes with it. This is very, very nice, and I believe an excellent value. So, right off the bat, that's something different, and uh, I'm sure modders will appreciate it. Now, on this thing, you've got this sad little Triceratops horn-looking thing that is supposed to be a front sight, but is in fact a joke, because there's no way to see it. You could sort of look over it, to where you'd have to angle the blaster up in order to use the sight, but that doesn't really help you very much in close quarters. So this doesn't really amount to anything. On the other hand, that's a nice actual flip-up sight. And look at this. It, you can actually see through the stock. Uh, not the stock, sorry, the carry handle. And the side actually lines up with it. Now, it's just as useless as this one because it doesn't actually have irons in there of any kind. But still, it's nice that this is here. As long as we're going to pretend that we're aiming, at least we can, you know, actually see through the blaster instead of pretending that we can see through the blaster. And it fits into this nice recess, quite flush, good fit and finish. On top of that, let's say that you just don't like this. Um, let's say that you don't want these extra sling points, which, by the way, the Modulus had plenty of room for and also doesn't have. Well, you can just take it off. And it creates a nice low profile. Um, it's a bit smaller than the regular Modulus. Uh, this is just a little bigger than a Strife. And with the low profile and two extra tack rails, I'd say that's actually pretty decent. Modular carry handles are something that I feel would have been really useful in the Modulus line. Uh, they would have been functional on a wide variety of blasters, and um, it took a Chinese company to show that these can be a thing and should be. I feel like this is something that we should have had as an option here, because a lot of people don't like this big bulky thing sticking out, as well as on the Ion Fire. If they were removable, I would have preferred that greatly. So, already... This blaster is showing us some things that the Modulus could have done and did not. Oh, also, real sling point, not this thing. This is a cool design, but in terms of how it feels, this isn't the greatest and isn't very useful as a sling, but this is a nice, sturdy sling point and works quite well. 
Uh, this barrel attachment point works with Nerf barrels just fine. Uh, this stock point works with Nerf stocks just fine. So, at least in that regard, they're pretty much identical. Now, this isn't to say it's perfect. Aside from the small uh, issues with uh, performance and this and that, um, the accessories do have some problems. They have these little, I don't know what these are called, but I'm going to call it a, a rail tooth. Uh, the rail teeth on these things are not as pronounced as the ones on Nerf accessories. And so they don't lock in quite as well. They do lock in just fine on the actual modulus one itself. So that works. Or at least the Chinese modulus, rather. So these things lock in and they hold. But when you're trying to get these to lock into Nerf blasters, or when you're trying to get Nerf accessories to lock in to these, you have some incompatibilities. Now again, if you're going to be modding this, and you don't mind tweaking this a little bit, then no problem. Just saying that it's not perfect. But 75 bucks for a bunch of accessories, it's okay if it's not perfect. Uh, it is unique, it is distinct, um, and it does enough, well enough, that I think that it's worth the value. So let's look at some of these other accessories and compare them to their Nerf equivalents. First of all, uh, it does come with mags. It's got this little six round mag that uh, kind of sucks. It has tolerance issues. You have to really push it in and pull it out. And as you can see, the follower sticks. So I really don't like this thing. But it also comes with this kind of different looking banana mag as well as this one, which is a straight 12 round. This is a 10 round. So these are more or less equivalent to the uh, Nerf modulus mags. And these I've had no problems with. They work just fine. It does come with a bipod. Um, the bipod is one of three accessories that has this strange issue. Instead of a rail tooth, it's got this weird little groove in here, as you can see unlike the traditional rail tooth that the Nerf blasters would have. Now, I'm assuming that this was meant to be a more secure attachment point uh, because it is a bipod and you're supposed to be able to hold it by the bipod if necessary. But I don't see anything on this blaster that indicates where this is supposed to lock in. There's nowhere. There's nothing that this locks into. It just slides freely and doesn't work very well. So I'm wondering if this was some special prototype part, something or other, that was supposed to work a certain way and was just never implemented. And that's a shame because it's really nice that they thought, okay, well, you know, let's try something a little more secure. And I noticed this is on the bipod as well as the two grips. So definitely it was meant to be a more secure option. And unfortunately, that just didn't pan out. Um, but... There you go. It doesn't really matter because, I mean, it's a bipod. Um, you're not actually going to use a bipod functionally in any kind of Nerf application. So if you like to pretend to be a sniper with this one, um, you can also pretend to be a sniper with this one. And they are both equally good at not making you a sniper. So the fact that this one has a slightly looser fit and it flops around a little bit is not any less useful than this one, which uh, has a slightly better friction fit. Um, either way, you're just going to not be a sniper. The drop grip is another one that has this little groove thingy, and it also does not have this button. So the normal drop grip has this button that allows it to lock into an open position or into a stowed position, whereas this one does not. It has a satisfying click, but doesn't actually do anything. So, again, the inability to lock into a rail, as well as the inability to lock in place, is kind of disappointing. Luckily, there's a bunch of other accessories this comes with, and this is an easy modification. You could get it to lock either way. You've also got this phone slash camera mount and it swivels so that's nice and again it has the dark tooth so this one can lock in somewhat uh, you've got an assault grip again with that groove so it's going to need some work this is very similar to the assault grip on the modulus 
And you've got a dart holder. It's a five dart holder with a lip along the bottom so that the darts won't fall out. It does not have any kind of dart tooth or anything, but it has a decent friction fit and it will stay in place in most cases. And then we get to the more unique and interesting stuff. Um, this is a translucent blaster shield with a little pseudo iron sight thingy here. And it flips down. Um, it works just like the Nerf version. It's kind of hard for it not to. It just blocks darts. So This is the sad, anemic little Nerf proximity barrel. The one they've included with the Chinese Modulus is the much nicer and, in my opinion, uh, much more presentable Spectre-style long barrel. So this looks great on not only the Spectre, but also on Strifes and Ravens and other blasters that look like they could take a silencer. This just looks unfortunate. But this right here, that's my jam. Another piece of actual useful hardware is the difference between this, which is the normal Nerf scope, which has a front iron but no rear iron, so it's not really a sight of any kind, it's just a decoration, compared to this thing. See that button? That is a very surprisingly bright tactical light. So this is kind of cool. And it comes with its own battery, so good value. If you want a scope scope, well, not really a scope scope, but the closest thing that Nerf has to offer, uh, the Nerf version down here is uh, quite similar looking to the Chinese modules version, and they both have a set of rear and front sights. They both sort of badly work, so if you want to pretend to be a sniper, this will likewise also not help you at all, but uh, I guess if it makes you feel good about yourself, there you go. This one does illustrate the issue with that little rail tooth. You see how tiny that rail tooth is compared to the uh, the Nerf version. So unfortunately, that is a bit of a problem. But again, it can be fixed. And you also notice that these little arms here in the Nerf blasters are spring-loaded, and they can kind of flex around, but these ones are quite rigid. They do not move at all. Let's get to the stocks. This Nerf stock is awful. So is the Praxis stock, so is the Recon stock. Um, this is just a bad design. This is not at all stable. So they fixed it by adding a reinforcement. This is extremely rigid. This works really well, still holds mags. It has some slight tolerance issues with certain mags, but a firm push and pull will get them in and out. And this has the advantage of working really well with the blasters it does work with. It has a short um, stock attachment thingy, so it can't work with Springer stocks and stuff, but at least it works with the stocks that it does work with. Uh, you have to pull on both of these, on both sides, in order for it to unlock. I don't know why they didn't make it a single piece, but there is that, for whatever odd reason. Um, the blaster stock from Nerf is a jolt. The blaster stock from the Chinese Modulus is actually a strong arm style. Otherwise works the same. Uh, this little back piece is not as comfortable as this one, but still works for shouldering. And for whatever reason, I feel like there's supposed to be a panel here that's just missing on mine. Um, I don't know if it's like that on all of them, but yeah, that's a little odd. Definitely not very presentable. Um, same thing here, although it does work with long uh, Springer style stocks, so that is a plus. And then we are down to the best one. So, you know, dual rail, long range barrel, forget that. Look at this thing. This looks like a sci-fi prop. This is just beautiful. It's so ridiculous. Um, this one I am sending to Ben Hamilton. And I'm sure he's going to do unspeakable things to it. And in my opinion, this is kind of the highlight of the whole thing. Uh, I'm running out of video time, so there you go. Um, some people might not like this. They are entitled to their incorrect opinion, but I think it is fantastic and a great example of why this Modulus for 75 bucks is a pretty decent value. So there you have it.